Hello again. This is a very short video. I just want to talk today about some of the things that we do not even bother to question. The things that we simply know for a fact. We've known them all our lives, grown up from childhood with them. Scientists agree with us, so I mean, why even bother to investigate or look further into it? These matters are settled. I'm going to look first at Galileo and the idea that dropping two weights will result in them reaching the ground together, even if one is much heavier than the other. But this is a wider principle, because we've all got various beliefs relating to race, family, society, all sorts of things that we simply do not look at. Um, I'll say more about that in a minute. For a moment though, here is Leaning Tower of Pisa with Galileo dropping two different weights from it. I mean, it might not have been the Leaning Tower of Pisa from which he performed this experiment. There's been a lot of debate about that. But at any rate, we know that he dropped something like a cannonball and a musket ball from a height, and they both hit the ground together. Right? We just take it on trust, it's true. Why would anybody bother to conduct the experiment? Well, <laughs> I'm the sort of person that does conduct experiments. I didn't send my daughter to school, not for a single day. I didn't trust anybody else to educate her. I did the whole thing myself. <sighs> a lot of it was done experimentally, showing her things and experimenting together to find out about the world. When she was seven, I showed her a large rock about the size of my fist and a small pebble. And I asked her if we dropped them both from a height, which she thought would hit the ground first. And she naturally said, oh, it'd be the rock. Now, this is a great opportunity for teaching, yeah? I set up a step ladder in my garden and I climbed up it and I dropped the rock and the pebble simultaneously and asked her to watch what happened. And she told me that the rock hit the ground first. So I tried it again. I tried to make it very fair by tipping them both off the board simultaneously. The same thing happened. The rock hit the ground first. Hmm. This really shouldn't have been happening, of course. Every one of the books we looked in, not just those for children, but for adults too, all told the same story about Galileo, how he had conducted an experiment and how the heavy rock would hit the ground at the same time as a light pebble. I mean, what can you say? It's what everyone believes. It's common sense, really. In the end, we tracked down Galileo's actual account of the experiment and I have this here. It's in a book published in 1638 and it's called um, The Two New Sciences. This is what Galileo actually said about the experiment. He said, Aristotle says that an iron ball of 100 pounds falling from a height of 100 cubits reaches the ground before a one pound ball has fallen in a single cubit. I say that they arrive at the same time. You find on making the experiment that the larger outstrips the smaller by two finger breadths. That is, when the larger has reached the ground, the other is short of it by two finger breadths. But this is absolutely fascinating. Galileo didn't say anything at all about two objects hitting the ground at the same time. He knew perfectly well that the heavy one would reach the ground first. And that's actually what happened. This is an example of a belief that we all have and it's completely false. It's false that the two objects will hit the ground simultaneously. It's false that Galileo said that they would after doing the experiment. It's false that the experiment yielded that result and yet we all of us believe it. I'm going to be looking in my next video about family life because it's the same thing with sociological phenomena. When I was a child it was a fixed and unutterable simple belief that the basic family consisted of a man and woman raising their two biological children. Anything else was described in those days as a broken family. We're talking now about the 1950s. When I was growing up I didn't know any divorced people. All the children I grew up with had both their biological parents raising them. Anything else was thought of as being utterly bizarre. It was taken as granted that that was what a family was. 
Today we've got a completely different view, but it's just as fixed. Our view today is that it's perfectly okay if, if for a single woman to bring up her children alone, or a man, or two men, or two women, or a man and woman who aren't you know, the parents of the child, the blended family. Nobody thinks anything at all of this. It's again taken as given that that's perfectly acceptable and we shouldn't be judgmental about it. Obviously it makes no difference to a child. It's just as good for a child to be raised by at least one person who isn't biologically related as by both biological parents. This is an axiom. It's something we believe just as we believe in the myth of Galileo and his falling weights. I have a book here I just want to quote from, and this is by some psychologists that did research into blended families. And they said, having a step parent has turned out to be the most powerful epidemiological risk factor for severe child maltreatment yet discovered. In other words, living in a blended family for a child is really, really hazardous. And the whole business, our belief system around blended families isn't for the benefit of the children, it's more for the benefit of the adults. And I'll be looking at that in the next video.